and welcome to the Health Oddity Podcast, episode 173. And if you are watching on YouTube or, you know, have any way of seeing what we're wearing, um, you will tell that this is the Christmas special. So if you are watching or listening live or not live on the day of release, I should say, it's the 22nd of December. So this is our Christmas special and uh, obviously, Pete and myself uh, are here today. I'll quickly say before we move on, um, Mr. Paul Bassett is just going to take a little bit of a of a of a back seat for a little while. He's he's got a lot on, um, uh, you know, personal life and business life. So um, he's going to have a little bit of a break from the podcast. But we do hope that he will be back uh, in the future. So that's just to explain uh, why it's Pete and I both in our festive attire today. I'm wearing something from National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation and a Santa Claus hat. And Pete is wearing, I think it's um, his girlfriend's uh, jumper. It's very snug. <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing something from Sean's wardrobe, yeah. Also, got... hasn't Sean got really short arms? Look at that. <laughs> I'm not exactly yeah. a guy, but like that's... Yeah, it's very snug. It's a mistletoe jumper and he's got a, a woolly hat on as well. Um, so yeah, we are we are kind of festive today. Um, anyway, we are going to be uh, discussing all things that we've been up to recently, things that we're going to be doing potentially over the you know the Christmas period, and how we're going to kind of manage our training and things like that as well. Uh, looking back over the last few weeks, guests, and looking forward to some upcoming guests. So uh, no, it's going to be a very good episode and we wish you we wish you a merry christmas we wish you we wish you a merry christmas especially if you are listening on um the 22nd or after over the christmas period at some stage so uh mr peter lant how are you doing i'm i'm doing very well um this uh, the whole point in christmas stuff is it's meant to keep you warm right i mean you've seen that you can read you know i've got a raw form thing on through you can read it through the jumper i don't know if that's because it's stretched so much um but anyway there you go but but here's the thing you don't need to get ripped you just put on a very 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 small jumper put on your missus's jumper or if you're a woman put on a very a smaller jumper and breathe in there you go mm. and then you look you know it's more like a sort of a jumper you might wear to like a bar or something, isn't it? It's not. It's not designed for. Um, I wouldn't wear this to a bar. <laughs> no, you wouldn't, you wouldn't wear to a bar. It's not designed for for kind of out walking on Boxing Day in the snow or something. No, like I it. wouldn't it's put it this way. Of... I wouldn't fancy my chances of getting out alive if I wore this to a bar. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, good, good, good. No, so um, I've been seeing what you obviously. Recently, I mean, recent guests that we've had on, we'll kind of talk back on some of these. Last week, we had, uh, you know, Dan and Tim on. We've had Chris Branch on, obviously, talking about his 100-mile successful run. We had Sean Cairns on, uh, talking about kind of strength goals for life. We had Will Polston. We've had Phil McDougall. We've had Anthony Flores. We've had some really fantastic guests over the last, uh, you know, couple of months Uh and, and uh, you know, been learning some great things and applying some great things. And I've also seen from yourself, you've been really hitting some heavy, heavy um, presses with your with your kettlebell pressing and really putting some of your previous PRs and your previous records, um, you know, to bed, I suppose. You've been doing multiple reps with things that used to be your one rep max. So, yeah, yeah. How, how's training going for you, the kind of back end of the year? Oh, and actually... Before we go into training, congratulations. You hit your six million step challenge, didn't you? You set yourself for 2023 as well. I did. I hit that um, the day after we recorded Chris's episode. Yeah, kind of towards the end of November, didn't you? Middle of yeah. November, towards the end of November. So you it. by the 30th of November, um, let's have a look. I'm just having a look now. Um, it'll be, I've still got a little bit more to do. You'll be able to figure out this is, you know, it's not necessarily the 22nd of September, is it? But I've, I've, I'm have i on 6,110,500 and I'll do another mm. couple of thousand today. Mm. And then, so I've got the whole of December left and I'm doing more than 500,000 steps. So I'll be on probably 6,750,000 uh, 6, or something. So I've gone way through that. Um, and I'm well happy with that. And the, the, the thing about that is, 
I don't know if I did six million a year normally. I doubt it. But just saying that I was going to do it made me walk a little bit further. Like just each time I go out, I'm like, I'm going to go. I'd, I'd, I'd give myself a time because obviously I'd have to be back to do things like this and sessions and stuff like that. But I'd be like, right, I'm going to go out and just add an extra couple of thousand on. And those couple of thousand, obviously, every day adds up to a hell of a lot. Mm. Um, so that's like the neat thing that we've talked about in the past, isn't it? The it, it, and I was talking to someone about this the other day. So when you go to the gym, if if you're trying to go to the gym to burn calories, you know, you go to the gym for like three hours a week. Whereas if you go out for a walk, you can go walking every day, and that's seven hours a week easily without having to get changed and have a shower and drive somewhere and all that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, it's it surprised me actually how pleasurable it's been. <laughs> and what's also excellent is I know that there's we, – we obviously don't advocate it at all on this podcast, but I know there's certain people who – if they're if they're looking to get stronger or possibly through like hypertrophy and get bigger and put on muscle and and like you say get stronger with their lifting they kind of really tone down any kind of cardio or any exercise that's not really uh aimed towards getting bigger and getting stronger so so the amount of walking that you've done i mean i don't know what what average distance kind of walking you'll be doing per day but it's probably it's got to be kind of six miles or 10 kilometers five miles at least a day you've probably averaged um to put in that amount of, of steps over the year eight, eight time miles time. a day eight miles a day so yeah so for people who are worried about potentially uh you know hampering or stifling their gains in strength by doing uh you know other activities and, and 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 cardiovascular stuff you know pete's walking an average of eight miles every single day and over the last 12 months <clears throat> has increased his strength massively so yeah don't scrimp on your steps and your walking and your cardio um just because you want to get stronger because that's not that's not how it works so yeah pete in terms of your strength recently um i've been seeing you you know pressing a 32 like it's it looks, like, <laughs> looks like it's, yeah, it looks like it's a 20 you know what i mean so pressing a 32 for um did i see you pressed it like was it 13 or 16 repetitions in I, one i've got 16 with it yeah um honestly this is this is this is good to share because it sounds like we're going to be just talking about me here but we're not obviously it's it's not about me it's about the the program and that paul mcelroy's been doing for us and 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 how effective it's been because i've got a dodgy it's not dodgy, but my left shoulder isn't as strong as my right. And that's because I've fallen on it. And um, I think I cracked a rib on that side years ago. I fell on it again in January this year. Um, and it's it's just, it doesn't move as well, shall we say. So it starts to kind of get tight and a bit achy as, it get, as, as, as we move through the weights and do a bit more volume with heavier weight. But my right is absolutely fine. So what we're doing at the moment, um, and Paul's done this successfully with like loads of people, is... We're doing more volume with a lighter weight on the left and then carrying on with the 32 on the right. Mm. And it's, it's, be, it's, so what it's done has been really interesting because, because I was struggling with my left, it was my central nervous system didn't like it. So therefore, it would make it harder on my right as well. Cause it was just like, I'm not, I'm not liking this. So we'll just make everything to do with pressing, um, not hurt, but we'll just make it so it's harder. Since we've gone lighter on the left, like, Honestly, the right has just gone back through the roof. It just loves it. So, and the left has has felt loads better as well. So it's not like I'm I'm going uneven. It sounds weird, but I'm doing more volume with a lighter weight on the left, which is and, and eventually they'll kind of converge and catch up. Mm. And it'll it'll still be obviously a discrepancy because there always is, isn't it? But it'll 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 get closer. So on my right, um, three years ago, the thirty-two, I could press it once or twice. And it would be a grind. Now I'm doing like ladders from 10 down. And then the other day, well, no, a couple of weeks ago, my half body weight fell as a 36. So I'm like 70, between 72 and 73 kilos. So my half body weight bell is a 36. So I was like, right, I'll have a go with that. I've never done more than six with it. And I think I'd done 10, 10, 9, 8, 8, 7 with a with a 32 and then I thought I'll have a go with a 36 
and just see how many I can do. And I got a nine and I was like, I've got to get to 10. So the last one was a bit of a bit of a tough one, but that was towards the end of it. And I'd already done a bunch of pull-ups as well and pistol squats and all of that. So I was like pretty, and it was on a Friday. Or was it, was it a Friday or a Monday? Anyway, it doesn't matter. And then, oh no, that was on the Monday. And then on the Friday, so at the end of the training week, similar, I'd done like 10, 9, 8, 7, or 8, 8, 7, 6, or whatever it was. And then for the five, I thought, well, I'll do, I'll have a go with the 40. So I just picked it up and pressed it three times. And I've never done that before. I pressed it once before. Um, I've done one rep before, and I think I'm, have I done that twice? No, I've only done that once, I think. So I got three with it. Um, and it felt easy. So there's, you know, for not being um, pre-fatigued, there'll be loads in that. So then I'd said those to Paul, you know, and it's he hasn't said, stop doing these silly things. But this, was it this week? I think it was the beginning of this week. It might have been. Anyway, um, I... Again, I was doing it. I think I did 10, uh, 10, 9, 9, 8, 7, whatever it was. And I thought, sod it, I'm just going to have a go. I think I got to the 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And I was, I was like, right, I'm just going to, I'm just going to have a go. And so I just pressed it as many times as possible. I got a 16 and I could have done more actually, but I thought I don't want to ruin the program by going max, maxing out and hurting something or, you know, doing something wrong. So I just did it and it felt comfortable, put it down. I was like, right, wallop, there you go. And then Mm. I said, I posted it. And didn't send it to him because he's on holiday at the minute. Um, and he he he's seen it and he's like, "Can you send us that video <laughs> so I can post it up?" <laughs> so we've set we've I've got a load of new goals now set as well. And one of them is to do. He said, "How about on the way up to doing the the beast tamer? How about getting thirty two presses with thirty two? And then I said, "Well, that sounds cool, but like it's not thirty two at thirty two. 32 at with 32. 32 at 32 years yeah. of age. And yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm 15 years too old for that. And he goes, well, that's what makes it even better because you're, you're old, basically. And I was like, oh, thanks. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I said, well, what about 47 with the 32? Because that's how old I am. And he was like, well, yeah, go on then. So we're going to work towards that, apparently. <laughs> so that's going to be going to be 47 reps Presses. One in, uh, in one unbroken set yep. with 32. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so then I've got that. Then I've, by the time I'm 48... Or at 48, do the Beast Tamer. So, if, like a p- pistol press and a pull up with the 48. And I think that's the old, I think, I don't know who the oldest person is to do it, but they're not 48. Hmm. Um, but then we've we, got- we spoke, didn't we, with Sean the other week? Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> yeah. Sean, Sean, like I say, Sean issued you a little, well, not a challenge, a friendly kind of challenge, wasn't it? You know, because he said he wanted to be the, the first person to do it. The heaviest yeah. person to do it and the oldest person to do it, didn't he? So well, I was yeah. sort of I was sort of poor about that and I mentioned it. So I was like, well, the race is on with Sean now. Yeah. But then I've also got a wider goal of when I'm so because obviously when you're 50, everything like well, within strong first say, but everyone like you become like a master's athlete, don't you? And all the weights go down. Yeah. So I so my half body weight bell when I'm 50 will be a 28 kilo. Mm. So I've said to Paul, why don't we go for, I can either, well, I can do both. I can do the beast tamer, but with a 50, right? Yeah. And then try, well, say try. I said, will it, would it be possible to do a press with 56, which is double the 28? So double. Yeah. The <laughs> and he, he just said, well, he goes, in my experience, nothing's impossible. So I was like, right, let's go for it. So like, that's the, <laughs> that's the next three years sorted. You know, so, so people like have asked me, you know, they've said, how do you, keep the motivation over that amount of time. And it's like, I pay Paul money and he sends me the program and I've got the goal and that's it. I don't need the, the motivation is just to do it every day or every, like three times a week as the program says, but um, some days I don't want to do it. Some days feel better than others. A few weeks ago, um, everything just felt really heavy. And then all of a sudden it's all got lighter. So it's, you know, it, it works. It's just, it's, this is interesting because this is actually quite good because we can move into another, a kind of conversation that I've had recently. I did I did a video for my for my members because I had we run a program called Pure Strength, which is kind of it's based on the push, pull, the hinge, and the squat. So it runs for a certain number of weeks, usually seven weeks, but the last run we've done for 14 weeks. And it's the same four exercises done over over that number of weeks. And the sets and the rep ranges change, 
um, but the exercises stay the same. And I had a couple of conversations with members who um, I suppose they were like a bit despondent, a bit frustrated, a bit demotivated because they feel like they should that again, they feel like they should be getting stronger quicker, you know, and being able to lift more and that sort of thing. So I did a bit of a video for, for the members really talking about the different ways that you can measure progress with your strength training. And this is all going to kind of make sense in a minute, but, but one of the, the first, the first one, and I can't remember where I've seen this at various places before, but, but the first kind of level of progression, if you like, is improving your technique in a, in a lift, you know? So it's kind of, I suppose, trying to get away from just purely looking at the number, the one rep max number, you know, that you've got, so you've got the improvement in the technique, then you've got um, doing the same the same load for the same number of sets and reps, but a lower RPE. So you're, you know, it just feels easier. Um, then you've got maybe the same, the same load with an improved technique, a lower RPE, and then an increased volume. So you're doing more sets and reps with the same weight. Um, and then, and then the last level of progression I said was actually, you know, adding more weight to the bar or, or having a heavier kettlebell. And then one I forgot to talk about was training density, you know, which is doing the same amount of work in, in less time. So I was trying to give this kind of, um, I suppose, like a bit of a spectrum of different ways that you could uh, assess or feel that you were making progress over and above just lifting more, you know, um, yeah. and and something I read and I can't remember where I read it the other day, which was really nice it might have been on a post uh, an instagram post saying but it was like strength is a range it's not a number you know what i mean and, and from what you've just the, what i love about what you said with your training and i know what what paul says and paul mcelroy will be coming back on the podcast in the new year um is that you know if you're if you're any rep max goes up then your every rep max goes up which is one of the things that he says and like you said you'd not touched a 40 kilo bell for months and months and months and you'd only ever pressed it once before and then you wet you picked it up and you pressed it three times you know and yeah. you know like you say going for the the 16 reps with 32 so i'm really trying to get across to people and and for myself as well i think because you can kind of if you do get stuck in this in this kind of mental rut of i've got to increase my you know my one rep max number and my all out effort number you kind of you just get stuck in that rut, don't you? Of, of, of that's all you focus on, and you kind of lose all of the the range of strength yeah. that you can develop over a range of reps and a range of exercises and all the rest of it. I mean, because you you very rarely now, I mean, never, uh, for, from what I understand, really test a one rep max, do you? No, I've, no. I've, I've no interest. Hmm. Because like everything you just said there, Paul, Paul's thing is like, you know, you, you train within comfort until your, your comfort zone envelops the goal. So if my goal was a one rep max with a 40 kilo, I've gone through that because it was yeah. a 32. So it's gone up by 25% hmm. by one rep max. But my but I can press the 40 for probably for five relatively easily, which means the 48 is not far off. So that's one of the things you might see people do Beast Tamer or Iron Maiden. They'll grind it through. But Paul's idea is once you get there, you'll do it and you'll you'll press the bell and be like, well, I could have done three with that. You'll mm. do the pull up and go, well, I could have probably done another one. And you'll do the pistol and you can do it on each leg or whatever. Um, and I'd rather that than grind through it and be like, I did it. And then and then forget about it and never be able to do it again. I'd rather be able to do it next week, the week after and the week after. Um, so that's kind of the philosophy behind that. But what you've just said there, I mean, it's such a massive topic. I wrote down, because you see it in newspaper headlines and stuff like that, don't you? Any statistic can be made to look good or bad. Any statistic that you that you have, you know, you could have 1% of people are this. That's a low statistic. And in a news headline, it'd be like, that's really low. But in another news headline, it's increased from 1% to 2%. It's doubled. That's 50, that's a uh, 200% which could then be made to look like a bad number because it's some bad things doubled from one to 2% or whatever. Right. So they can all be made to look good or bad. So you can take any training session and you can say, right. So at the minute for me, my pistols aren't going very well. They feel like rub, like turd, to be honest, but my, I'm getting really be much better at my pull-ups and my presses on my right. My left's catching up and that's a win. 
a few months ago, my pistols were the things that were feeling great and my presses were the things that were getting me, like making my sessions feel hard. So it, it and it'll, it'll, it'll probably happen again, but it doesn't matter as long as, as long as it, 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 in fact, it doesn't even matter how it feels as long as I do it, you know, and it's not injuring me. That's all that matters. And it's not affecting my life and making it harder to go walk and, and, and basically do work and stuff like that. But um, yeah, that's, yeah, that's kind of it. But like you said, that's it, it's a huge thing as well because my pistols have been feeling a bit rubbish. So I was like, well, is it my hip mobility? So I did a bunch of hip mobility the other day, a bunch. I did some hip mobility exercises because I, do, I don't do that much mobility. Oh, anymore. I think I saw you do you doing that. Yeah, with the, yeah. yeah the foot, and they were yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah. They were fine. So I was like, okay, so it's just, maybe it's in my head. Maybe it's every time I pick the bell up, I'm going, this is going to be hard. So therefore it is because, you know, the story that you tell yourself is what shows up. So it's like, there's all these things and progress is on the other side of all of them, isn't it? That's the thing. You can you can see progress within it, however you look at it, but then you can also see that, well, my pistols aren't feeling great at the moment. And it's quite funny because a, a guy who showed up to one of the sessions the other day, he is three weeks older than me, right? Mm. And he had a sore Achilles and he doesn't know why. And he was like, ah, oh, it's because I'm 47, isn't it? I was like, shut up. It's not. I was like, you're old, you're three weeks older than me. I'm 47, and it's not that because as soon as you think that, it'll become that. So yeah. no, <laughs> stop. I was it. chatting to. I was training a member, Tara, earlier, who's I think she's 53, 54, something like that, and she said she was out um, having lunch with someone like the other day, another friend the same age, and she and Tara kind of tweaked her back couple of weeks back and it's it's fine now but you know you 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 train you start you know you exercise you train you're going to get the occasional thing you know that 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 happens you know and and her friend had kind of said to her oh don't you think you're a bit too old now to be doing all this sort of stuff you know and to do, do doing this training and and i just this kind of notion that as soon as you're in your 50s or your 60s that you should just do some gentle gardening and go for a little, a little walk every now and then. And that's kind of it. You know, you just don't, you just, uh, it, it, it's just ridiculous. But it's, I think that's a very, very commonly held, yeah. kind of, you know, if it usually, if some, if you say to someone, Oh, I've, you know, I've done, like, I've got a little bit of um, uh, elbow, little, very little bit. It's nearly gone tendonitis, you know, in the elbows um, last few weeks. And it's got, which is why I've been doing my, any pressing. I've been wearing some like sleeves on my elbows just for a bit of compression. Um, but you tell someone that and it's, oh, it's cause you're doing too much training. You, you should stop doing that now. You know, you should, you're doing too much. You need to do let, you know, and it's just the kind of the excuse just to, to do nothing, you know, and if you do nothing, then you, you go downhill very, very quickly. Don't you? Yeah, I mean, this is one of the things I've been talking about for ages, about the whole subconscious mind talking you out of stuff, hmm. um, your own subconscious mind. But then when you've got other people telling you that you probably shouldn't be, because, and it's mainly because they don't, you'll, you'd will you never get or rarely get... Someone, someone who trains trying to talk yeah, you out of training. Yeah, yeah, you probably shouldn't be doing that. They might say, oh, you might need to take a step back. You probably want to drop the weight slightly or whatever, but they're never going to say, oh, you, you want to give up because of your age. It's it's Because it's not that, is it? And I've said that a lot in the past of people judge you based on their own limitations. So, you know, it's, it's someone will say, well, that's unnecessary. And it's like, well, you think it is, you know, um, but I don't. And mm. it doesn't hurt. It doesn't affect me a apart from getting stronger. And I was talking to a guy yeah. about it on Tuesday night, actually. And he he's in his 60s, a guy who came to see me. He did. Um, he, start, he started coming about a year ago. He thought a 12 kilo bell was heavy. You know, he's now, he can do five reps with a 24 kilo now, pressing it above his head. Um, which for strong first, if he's in his 60s, like that would be a 20, but he can do the 24. He can probably press a 28. We've never even tried because there's no need um, yet. But I was saying to him, you know, we we're just having a chat about this because he did, he's done a lot of rowing in the past. Um, so cardio wise, he's, he's brilliant, but strength wise, you know, he needed, a, he needed a bit of work. Um, and, we were just talking about how strong is too strong. And it's like, well, if you're getting stronger, there's no point in saying, well, that's, that's strong enough. I might as well stop. 
Um, and it doesn't mean to lift heavier weights. You might as well just keep training. And if you get stronger as, as a result of that, then, you know, there's no issue, is there? <laughs> really? Again, and again, and it's what you it's what you just said there. You can, how strong is too strong and you can get stronger, but you don't necessarily need to get, like you, like you just said, you don't necessarily need to be lifting heavier weights to get stronger. You know, you can do, build up the volume with the same weight or do more repetitions or, you know, do more sets or, you know, whatever, or do it with more ease, you know, or be able to do it more regularly, more often, be able to do it with less rest, you know, all these kind of things, you know, I saw one of your guys, actually, I think you posted it, who was doing like 32 kilo presses and made it look so easy. I think I might've commented on the post, but um... that's, that's Byron. He's, um he's upside down. Okay. His, head's, his head's upside down, a bit like yours, because he's bald with a beard. <laughs> okay. Um, but his body's upside down as well because he's he's got arthritic knees. So like his look and he's got a weird thing with his toes where he can bend them like all the way back like that to touch his foot. Touch the, right, okay. like, the top of his foot. They're really so support like he's um So they're really lax, they're sort of hypermobile. He, hypermobile, yeah. So his ability yeah. to grip the ground is quite hard, and he's got arthritic knees, which might be a result of that. I don't know. Um, you know, but he can squat quite heavy. His knees are fine and he, he can do that, but his, his upper body, he's just much stronger upper body. He's got massive shoulders. He's like really wide. So a 32 for him is nothing, but he's, yeah, in, he his, was, he's in his fifties as well. I was going to say, he was pressing that like a 20, you know, it just yeah, yeah. up and down, up and yeah, no, it was fantastic. He's the, um, I, we've, we've talked about this the other day with a few of my guys. He's like the outright strongest one. But then pound for pound strongest one, this guy's called this guy called Steve, who's 57. And and he presses a 24 like it's nothing for reps, and he's he's tiny. There's no on him. Mm. You know, and then there's um it's there's another guy, Johnny, who's really tall, and he's got massively long arms and hugely long legs. It's he's I've spoken about him before, actually. He's not weird, but it's it's just quite funny because if we sat down, he's the same height as me. But when mm. we stand up, he's like six foot five because yeah, his legs yeah. are really long and he's got a short body, right? Yeah, yeah. Because we've spoken about this before, like Mark Rifkin's got long arms, hasn't he? And 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 what have you. So it's like it's all different limb lengths. Mm. But I found a video of him trying to press a 28 a couple of like five years ago or something like that. And he, he got it on one side, missed the other, then got it, but he made it look really hard. Mm. And now he does he does it no problem. So, mm. you know, there's all these different Kind of, it looks like everyone's doing the same thing, but they're all doing it in a slightly different way. Because that's the other thing you get, don't you? With like we were talking about in the past as well, with variety, and people are like, I need to do a load of variety because otherwise, like you know, you got to shock your body and all this sort of stuff. And it's like, well, yeah, but um, you know, you can do similar, same exercises slightly differently, can't you? Like a pistol squat's slightly different to a a squat, a kettlebell, double bell front squat's different to a goblet squat, which is different to a back squat, which is different to a front. It's like, it's all the same movement though, isn't it? You know, so it's just coming out. With, yeah, I mean, I had, um, I, I trained a guy, Paul, this morning, first first thing, who's about, again, he's mid, mid 50s, maybe 54, 55. And, um, and it was freezing cold this morning. So it was like minus two. Um, and, uh, yeah, it was. It was minus two first thing this morning, and the gym wasn't much warmer than that. To be honest, it was it was freezing. Um, I've been I've been to your gym in December <laughs> when I've been in film at Dougal when it snowed as well. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. a because swinging Indian clubs doesn't really warm you up that much, does it? Bloody hell! Yeah. But that just, just what you were saying about doing things slightly differently. So it was really cold, and and he's quite good now at doing. Uh, you know put uh, chin ups he's, he's got himself a chin up bar at home actually which is re which is really good because he's he's put it out where his bins are on the outside of his house um on the wall so every time he goes outside he's got i've got him doing this grease the groove where if, if he goes to put anything out he'll just do jump up and do two or three chin ups you know and just and he's just been doing these two or three and then we've got this thing now that four is the new three so he can do four like really easily now as well so he just does four and this morning because it was so cold all we did was was, and it was something I was listening to um to Joe DeFranco's um industrial strength show on the podcast and um and he was talking about just picking like three exercises and setting a timer for 10 minutes and just doing these and just just doing them for 10 minutes and so we had we had three chin ups five goblet squats with like a 16 and then three press ups and I said to him we're just going to do this for 10 minutes, going from the three chin-ups to the five goblet squats to the three press-ups. 
and you have as much rest or as little rest as you need to know that you can do the next set well and get all your reps, you know. And doing that for 10 minutes, I think he went round eight times. So he ended up doing 24 chin-ups, 24 press-ups and 40 goblet squats in 10 minutes, you know. And he was really warm, but every technique was, well, every repetition was perfect. You know what I mean? Because you're only yeah. doing three. He's not going any, anywhere near fatigue. Um, so that was really good. So um, just having those kind of, and but that's still, it's, it's, effect, it's a chin-up, it's a press-up, it's a goblet squat. They're basic exercises. But like you say, the, the way that you can put them together or the way that you can structure them or the way you can superset them or you can do ladders or you can do reverse ladders or whatever you do, or you can do like every minute on the minute or whatever, it's limitless, really. So this variety of training is one of the things I said in the video I recorded for the guys was, you know, I'm planning on training for the next 50 plus years, you know. Um, yeah. It doesn't need to be that I'm going to have another hundred different exercises that I learn because the basics are what work and I don't get bored doing the basics, you know, and doing them well and seeing improvement. So it's, no, it's good. It, it's funny. It's funny actually, because the, the guy who I was talking about the 60, he's 61 or 62. He, so when he joined the 12 was heavy. Now he's pressing a 20 for, for ladders down from 10. Mm. Um, so you can press a 20 10 times, no problem. You can press a 24 five times, like I mentioned earlier. And then the other week, so we'll do, we'll do like three sessions a week and we'll tend to focus on pressing and pulls, we'll do like renegade rows and stuff like that one day. And then squats the other day, we'll do like Bulgarian squat, uh, split squats he's doing. He's doing some lunges um, with a bell in the rack. He was doing it with the bell down here, which is easier, but then now he's holding it in the rack and he found it really hard in the beginning, but now it's getting easier. And he's doing a ladder up of that while he does a ladder down of double bell front squats, right? And and then on the third day, we'll, we might do some snatches or something like that, a bit more kind of like conditioning type stuff. And the other week, a 16 would have been heavy for him when he started. We got a 16 and we just did swing, snatch, clean, press, squat, each side. Rest, then two each side, then three, four, went up to five, and then back down to one, three, you know, and we just did that for a bit. And I was like, how does that feel? And he, he was like, oh, it just felt like a nice, you know, a nice little um, reset session. And I was mm. like, you wouldn't have been able to go anywhere near that a year ago. You wouldn't have been able to even do it. And now it's just something you do. And he was like, oh, it just felt, it felt like, just felt like everything was moving nicely and all that sort of stuff. And I was like, well, there you go then. So you've got stronger. And that, that what would have been impossible now feels like just something, something you could do tomorrow again for no, for just, just for the hell of it. Yeah. You know, so, and what you were saying about um, all the different types of measuring stuff, my sessions are now getting shorter with the heavier weights. They were, they were getting long. Like at the beginning, I was like, blimey, this is taking ages. And now it, it, it they get done in two thirds of the time that they were like a month ago, even certainly two months ago. So that's, you know, it's, it's, it's the same stuff. It doesn't feel any, um, it doesn't necessarily feel easier, but it's getting done quicker, which may, means it is easier. So, you know, mm. so your central nervous system is watching all this as well. And it knows. Mm. Yeah. I was just reading. I'm reading as well. I've got this, this, um, outlive, you know, the P Peter. Oh, yeah. you, have you read that one yet? Or uh, I haven't. No, it's, you know, it's very, very good, but I just shared, I'm going to share a thing, which I've just done as a, as a camera, which again, just, just kind of tying back into, I mean, we've spoke a lot about, I mean, I've mentioned her a lot on this show before Edith, who's in a, um, kind of, uh, mid sixties, um, lots of people now in their seventies that we train and, and there was a quote that I've, I've, I'm going to put it out on, on Instagram a bit later on, but it says that, and I wasn't sure, it says the data are an, um, are an ambigu unambiguous. And I would have thought it would be the data is unambiguous, but I'm sure no, it is. Data is data as like a plural. Oh, yes. Yeah, so I'm sure he's done it right. He's a doctor and he would have done it. Yeah. So the data are unambiguous. Exercise not only delays actual death but also prevents both cognitive and physical decline better than any other intervention. Um, Cause he's taught, he was saying um, in the book that previously he, he was, he was thought it was all about diet or well, not all about diet, but he put diet as sort of like the main 
thing to focus on, you know, for your, for your health and for your longevity. And now he still says it's very important. He doesn't say it's not important, but he, but all the studies and the, and, and what he is kind of talking about is the actual uh, exercise and activity and being physically active and physically mobile actually sort of supersedes the, and it's not saying that, you know, he, cause he talks about exercise and diet and sleep and, and everything is, is important, but he would have previously put diet ahead of exercise, but now he kind of puts exercise just ahead of diet, you know, in terms of the importance that it, that it has, um, you know, in your longevity, um, don't know what you, you, you were kind of looking as if you were thinking about that. As well, I was thinking. Yeah, I was, cause I'm, I'm obviously not a doctor. Um, and I haven't done all the research on it and all of that, but you know, just just from just from that immediate thing, it's like, well, because it's it goes back and forth, doesn't it? Mm. And obviously, he's you know he knows he, he knows what he's talked about, and he's written the book on it and all that. But and I don't know what he's done previously, as in before it was all diet. Was it all diet, or did he think it was exercise before that as well? Because it goes it, it, that goes in the same cycles as hit training and strength training and bodybuilding and all that. They all go in cycles, don't they? And I think the whole, certainly since I've been uh, training for the, like training people for the last 10 years is it was all about exercise. And then it was like, oh, well, actually you think you can out train a bad diet. No, you can't. And then that comes in and then it's all about diet. And then it's actually, well, no, because you can do that. But if you focus on diet too much, you lose too much weight and you'll get brittle bones and blah, blah, and all this. So it's like, it, it it's it's all of it, isn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, I don't think I know, and I don't, I don't think, think any one. I don't think yeah. any one is more is more important than the other. In my head, I mean, it might be in the research. Yeah, it's definitely that. not. It's not. It's definitely not on either or. Do you know what I mean? It's like yeah. they're all important, and they all need to be focused on. But I think he from from uh, the, the studies and things he's talking about is that the actual and it is that it is and it's not you know bodybuilding. It's you know it is you know. uh walking and maintaining mobility and doing you know maintaining um you know muscle mass and bone density and it is it's kind of all of that and it's not at an extreme level but he's kind of they're, they're all important don't get me wrong but he just kind of thinks that that above any other individual intervention that you can make um is you know has the most impact if you can uh, you know, remain maybe, and, um, maybe it's more, more, more health, more, more active, I should say. Yeah. Maybe because it promotes you to eat better as well. If you do that, your body then starts to crave mm. the, the things it needs to be able to do that. Doesn't it? Yeah. Cause I certainly know that. I mean, I had, I've been doing, I've been, I'm nearly done on all my supplements actually, which is great. <laughs> um, Shit loads of them for a while, but um, I'm, I'm coming towards the end of those. And Maybe this is why I've been hitting good numbers in weight and stuff like that because like good problems that I've had are, 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 are better. Um, you know, so I certainly know that if you've got, if you don't eat healthily and you, you, and you, you know, your gut's not kind of on your side, shall we say, <laughs> that affects you hormonally as well, doesn't it? Um, you know, and weight affects you hormonally and all that, which then affects how you train. Um, and also with the gut stuff, like you're saying, so much stuff I'm reading and listening to at the moment is around, you know, the, 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 the calories in, calories out kind of model of weight gain or weight loss. But but they're, they're talking about, um, you know, what you're what you're taking in and what you're sort of absorbing and able to utilize is not the same thing. You know, so if you're if your gut health is not is not right and your gut lining and the rest of it, if you're not able to actually um, digest and process and break down food and then bring it into the bloodstream, then you can be eating, you know, what you, you know, what you think is a good diet, or you can be eating lots of protein or you can be eating lots of, but, but if you're not actually absorbing it and utilizing it properly, then it, yeah. it, it doesn't, it only shows a part of the picture, doesn't it? And that goes with chewing your food as well. Mm. Um, because, Caitlin, the, the lady who, um, the dietitian lady was saying, you know, um, do you chew your food? Because things like, you know, chia seeds, flax seeds, all those sorts of things. She was like, the best thing to do with them is just blend them up in a smoothie because you don't chew them. You, they, they just go in and then they come out. Or yeah. A lot of them will, and they don't get absorbed. If you blend them up, then, you know, they, they get absorbed into the into your stomach yeah. line, that sort of stuff. So 
Um, yeah, I found that really interesting because I don't I don't necessarily wolf my food down. I don't eat fast, but I don't eat that slowly either. Like you know the Josh Hillis thing about putting your fork down and all that. So because there's chicken- something like like how uh, what I, again I won't even try and pick a percentage because I'm plucking it out of the air. But there's a percentage, isn't there, of of the kind of the digestion process that that starts in the mouth, you know, that starts yeah. with chewing, you know, and, and it and, triggers uh, a, yeah, it triggers yeah. all sorts to go on in your brain to say, right, food's coming. Yeah. Saliva. And also, and, and like you say, actually breaking down like the, especially things like, uh, you know, plant-based stuff, vegetable based stuff that's kind of fibrous and in husk and taste yeah. breaking down, you know, if you're not, like you say, if you're just wolfing it down and you're not breaking it down with your teeth and breaking down the fibers, you put it into your body and your body doesn't really, digest it as well if you've not kind of done the done the job that the the chewing's meant to do you know yeah exactly and also chewing's good for your jaw muscles because mm. <laughs> <laughs> like you know it affects the shape of your face and and all mm. of that sort of stuff like yeah. you know but what i find fascinating about what you just said there is all of this happens it's not the chewing you've got to do that obviously but everything you've just said there your body prepares itself for all of this stuff coming and it knows what you're eating as well happens without you even realize it you've got no concept of that happening it just happens um and it's i, f- I find that fascinating because that goes with like all the mindset stuff and everything that you think about how people go through their day all of that stuff it all happens on autopilot and you've got you're just totally unaware of it mm. and then people wonder why they're tired all the time they wonder why um you know they can't sleep they wonder why when they train they feel lethargic and all of that and it's like you just if you're unaware of all of this stuff going on like even just putting something in your mouth and your body gets ready to digest it, you don't know that's happening. All of the other stuff that you don't know that's happening, you just think, no, no, it's just because I'm tired. It's fine. This will be, you know, it'll pass and and all of that. It's it's so beneficial to get to know as, as best you can cycles that happen within your daily life. And then you can start to recognize what makes you feel good? What makes you feel bad? Um, and then you can start to work on them. And that's like taking this to a bit of a, a, a further degree. But it's like it's 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 the same for like every process that you go through, isn't it? Mm. Not just eating, but exercising as well. If you get out of bed and you feel sluggish and you don't want to go, it's like, well, why is that? Have you been think? Did you think about it when you went to bed last night? Did you set your alarm or did you just go? I'll just get up and go. Um, or I don't want to go, but I'll go to sleep now anyway, and then I'll go in the morning. And that's you're not going to sleep well doing that because your brain's going to be on autopilot saying, Well, you're not, you don't want to go, you don't want to go. So just silly little things like that. I mean, I've even noticed it myself. So I have to get up to do sessions with the guys in the park three days a week um, and then do the walk on a Saturday as well. So I set my alarm for that. The other days, so Sunday I don't set an alarm, um, Wednesday, Thursday. Sean gets up to go to work at a different time and I don't have to get up to do sessions. I still have to get up, obviously. But I, I've found that I sleep better on a Tuesday night and a Wednesday night because my it's not my alarm that's going to go off, it's hers. And she has to get up. <laughs> yeah. so that, and it's not because I don't care whether she gets up and makes it to work or not, but I'm like, that's that load is off me. Mm. And it's not like I sleep badly the other nights. I just... I think I wake up earlier because I know my alarm's going to go off. Whereas on those days, I'm like, I'm, it's it's like it's, it's out of my hands, mm. and that's that's not even a big thing. That's something so small, but it makes a massive difference. Yeah, no, it's it's so interesting, isn't it? And um, no, I think I, I'm away this coming weekend. Well, not not this coming weekend. It's Christmas, but <laughs> yeah, <you know, laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going down to uh, to Norfolk on my own for a weekend. I did it last year. I'm going to do some swimming in the sea and uh, and I'm taking, I'm going to take that book out, live and read some more of that. I'm going to take the, the Will Polston book again, the uh, North Star thinking and make some notes and just do thinking. And like you say, just try and I, t- I said this to some, someone at the gym yesterday. I kind of, they said, Oh, where are you off to the weekend? I said, I'm going to just uh, going down to Sheringham for the weekend. Uh, what, who with? Well, on my own really what are you doing that you know and so so many people a few people actually say to me oh i couldn't do that because i'd be i'd i'd be lonely or i'd be bored or i'd be you know and that's kind of why i want to why i like to do it just one weekend a year because it's away from all distractions you know what i mean i've got no one else i've got my time is not being kind of pulled in any direction i've got all day just for a couple of days just to 
to go and have a swim in the sea, to go and get a nice coffee, to sit and read a book, you know what I mean? And just to think. And um, and one weekend a year, I don't think it's a lot to a lot to ask of yourself, you know what I mean? Or or you know, even if it's a day, whatever, just to try and really think about because because I like you like you've been saying a lot lately, you know, my life probably is just run on autopilot ninety nine percent of the time. And I don't really, and, and many of us don't really stop and actually think, well, I'm doing all this. Is this really what I want to do? Or could I be doing things a little bit differently? Or am I yeah. really happy the way things are going? Or can I slightly change the way I'm doing things? Or, or, you know, so it's just that need to just get away, a bit of peace and quiet review. Um, you know, that, I'm, I'm I love I love that because, yeah, especially when people have said to you as well, like, I couldn't do that because... In the in because I get bored. What the mean is, and I'm not. I, I don't know what they mean because I don't know. I don't know everyone, and I don't know how they think. And I also certainly don't know who said that to you. But <laughs> yeah. what what that says to me is, I couldn't do that because my thoughts would be going mental around my head of mm. of about life and all of this, and I'd have to I'd I'd, I'd have to either try and quiet them or acknowledge them or whatever, and. Mm. I was talking in the in the group I'm part of actually a, a, a few weeks ago, and Brian, the guy the guy who runs it, was saying, um, you know, that's one of the things. Like when people are at home, say, and they're doing a bit of work or whatever, or they're, they're cooking, and they're like, oh, I have to have the radio on, or I have to have the TV on in the background. There's a bit of company. That's mm. a thing, isn't it? Like, oh, I'll, I'll have that on. It's a bit of company. It's like, no, no, you have that on because it means you don't, you don't have to think about anything. You don't mm. have to be in your head. So when you're cooking or whatever, um, you know, if there's if it's silent. While you're doing it, you could be thinking, you know, about life or whatever, um, you know, and your direction of vision and like what you want to do and who you want to be and goals and all that. Um, and that might sound like people might look, look at that and think, well, who the hell wants to do that? And say, like, yeah, but I do that when I'm out walking the dog. I think about things. Um, I was doing like that's where the 50 year old 50 kilo thing and 56 kilo came. I was out on a walk and I was like. What am I going to do when I get the beast tamer? Because it's getting, I mean, it might be a year away, but I'm like, it's getting close. And then what happens? It's done. And then then, then what? So I've already thought about that. So, but if I was listening to like... Or people plug or, into there, or people plug into like, they just listen to Spotify or listen to music, it, don't they, when they're out walking? Exactly. And, if yeah. I was doing that, then all I'm doing, like, yeah, if you're listening to podcasts while you're doing that and all that, all you're doing is filling your head with more bloody stuff rather than trying to organise the stuff that's already in there. Mm. Um, and there's a funny story because yesterday I was out with a boy and there's a golf course up where we are walking and, and it's next to the university. There was a lad walking along with his, um, like, a, he was a student with his massive bag on, strapped on his back, and one of the um, sleeves fell off his club. Is that what you call them? Off the top yeah, of yeah, head. golf. Yeah, yeah. And he was, he, he, I saw it fall off. So I picked it up and he was slightly ahead and I was shouting after him and I was whistling and everything. He couldn't hear me because he had his headphones in, mm. his earphones in. And I was like, I was bellowing. I've got a loud voice as well. I was bellowing, like I can whistle with my fingers and everything. And I was just like, I was dancing around in the background. And he happened to look that way and he kind of must have saw me out the corner of his eye and he went like that. And I was like, is this yours? And he went, and he pulled his ear thing out. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I think it is. I couldn't hear. Sorry, it. I was miles away. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it <laughs> yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. it just. I mean, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with that. But I was thinking, like, what happens if you know we're we're near some woods and stuff like that? What happens if someone's broken the leg and they're shouting for help? <laughs> like you, you know, and everyone's walking around with them in their ear. You're not. You're not going to like nobody's going to hear it. So you could be no. in the middle of somewhere that was surrounded by people. And not be able to get any help. It's mm. it's crazy, but it, it's not crazy. But it's it just makes the, these are the things I think about when I'm out and about walking. <laughs> <laughs> do we? So what we'll do, uh, yeah, Pete, we'll start to wrap up now. I think we've been on for nearly, nearly an hour, but um, yeah, obviously over the next week or so, Christmas, um, you're away, I believe. Are you? You're going to be away for a few days. Yeah, just it's just the three of us, me, me, Sean, and the boy. Um, mm. the dog, the boys of the dog, by the way. No, I haven't got, we haven't got any kids, but um, yeah, we were going to go to Guernsey, but the the you can't. Well, it's quite hard to get there this year because we can't fly because we've got the dog, and you have to get the ferry. But there's only like twelve hour ferries on, and and we'd have to leave them in the car for twelve hours in the hold in in, in the yeah yeah, yeah yeah. Um, yeah. so we're not going to do that. So we're just we're going we're going somewhere near Bude, I think. Okay, nice. Um, for a week, so you know, nice walks and beaches and 
all that sort of stuff. And will so, that be will that be taking your your bell with you as well and doing your of course your program? Yeah, of brilliant. course. Yep. Yeah. Whatever, yeah. whatever. I'm on that that week. I'll be taking it with us and doing it. Yeah. What about you? Uh, I'm working. I'm working. So I've got a, a couple of men. Well, one of my, Russ, one of the trainers, is off all week. So I'll be I'll be off. Uh, you know, Christmas Day, Boxing Day, and then working the rest of it. But I'll just be kind of training through, and you know, have some probably some shorter days and things like that. But yeah, just kind of stay stay on track with the training and things, really, because I've got some goals, obviously, that I'm still working towards and and working towards stuff for next year. So I've, I basically I've just done the SFL strong first so i'm having kind of like a week off from training and then 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 back on it again from next week so uh no i'm lo- looking forward to that and yeah looking forward to kind of hitting the ground running in january as well i kind of quite i like christmas and new year i like that kind of time for again for kind of i suppose reflection for resetting what you're going to achieve the next year and for kind of just getting your mind in the right place to to kind of start the year you know so uh no it's going to be good it's going to be good i was just thinking as well um how did lauren get on Ah, yeah, I was going to actually say uh, we're going to do a couple of well dones, I think, because I know you're going to maybe mention Jed as well. Yeah, so, well, I think she came second. She got a silver silver medal in her kind of category, um, you know, uh, with the, yeah, so so just for for people listening. So uh, we've just recently, uh, last weekend, had the uh, IKMF uh, Kettlebell Sports World Championships in Budapest in Hungary. Um, And Lauren, we've had a few, well, a few people from the show, really, isn't it? Lauren Emery. Um, ben Morris, uh, Finbar Tulan, uh, Ollie Mel, you know, all these guys yeah, out yeah. competing. Yeah. So, but no, Lauren did really well. She got a competition PB. She got her um, uh, candidate from, is it candidate for Master of Sport, CMS? CMS yeah. that's what, um, she got that and she came, she got placed silver in her, in her category, which was great. Um, Finbar won gold. He he got he won his 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 category. He got um, a world record as well. Yeah, he? he got world record. He got gold in in his. So he's world champion again. So he's done brilliant. I think uh, Gareth Malloy. I think Kevin Duong both um got silver um in theirs. Um, I, I, think... I, I saw that. I didn't see anything from Gareth for a few days, and I thought, I wonder what's happened there. Mm. Um. But again, he got like a personal record. I think he did better than he's ever done. But I know he posted someone else. I'm like, I'm like, who beat him? Who, yeah. <laughs> who's, the, who's the machine who beat? Like, because he's a, he's a beast. Yeah, just one person. Obviously, was just a little bit better. So uh, one, that's one amazing. Person did it. Um, but yeah, no, Ben, ben Morris. Obviously, I, I didn't. I haven't really seen. I know he had something. Maybe go go. Yeah, I've I've texted on. him, and I'm I need to, I need to get back to him. Actually, he said yeah. yeah, he's recovering and stuff like that. So I don't think yeah. it went. Fully That's according the plan, to plan. But I think plan. he got COVID like the week before he went. He did, yeah. Um, he wasn't well just a week before. So, but yeah. no, it's great to see all those guys. And and obviously, and, and the SFL just gone. Um, Emma Gray, Matt Sales for, from Unique Results went and, and did that. They, they've they just got the one rep max bench to pass. They passed everything else. Um, and you want to give a shout out to Jed, don't you, as well, I think? Yeah, Jed, the legend that is Jed. Um <laughs> Yeah, he was there as well, and he missed the bench, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, only I think he only yeah only the bench. He's got to yeah, do. he got. And I saw he re, he reasserted his level one while he was there. He reasserted his SFB he, while he was there, and his level two. He reasserted everything. So if he gets yeah, I, he said bench, this. So I, I might yeah. be wrong because it, I, I'm pretty sure they might have changed stuff. But if he gets his bench press within the next six months or whatever it is to um, to send it in, he, he becomes elite. Mm. It'd be great, which is great because we we only started training. He bought a set of he, he trains in his back garden, right? He's, he's dead funny. He's a window cleaner, right? And he he's you can see, with the hoses in between sets, he'll run up and get the hose and like put it into the next thing. And yeah, then they go on the back of the van to clean windows and stuff. Don't <laughs> it's hilarious to watch, and he's got a big gazebo outside where he keeps his weights underneath and all of that. But he only bought a barbell and a set of plates about four months ago because he was like oh, i've got the SOF- sfl in november and i was like okay well do you want to start training for that then because he never told me so i was like right when is it and kind of like looked at when it was backtracked from there and went right let's see where you're at so he bought some plates and a barbell and everything and he started from there and then he went through it and didn't get the he's, he, he doesn't do bench press ever mm. so he started doing that and he he, he got close so he'll get he'll get it 
Um, yeah. and he got the deadlift and he got no he was he was so, great i was yeah. sat i was sat um opposite him at dinner on uh on the saturday night <laughs> and he was hilarious he's just telling us stories and everyone was cracking up you know he's just a funny guy you know he's brilliant yeah. Yeah, yeah he's great right okay guys so over the next couple of weeks we've got some great guests coming up we've got um let me just try and think off the top of my head um next week we have got uh, i think we've got alison young coming up we've got fabio back on, fabio's owning back on we've also got um pav johal coming on as well who's a who's the strong mum project who's powerlifting and high rocks and all that sort of stuff um alison young who's coming on is um the she won the tactical strength challenge the last tactical strength challenge um globally um she she's fantastic strong lady from london uh, so we've got some fantastic uh strong strong ladies coming up and we've got fabio coming back on we're gonna have paul mcelroy coming back on to join us as well so we've got some really great guests uh you know to kick off uh 2020 you say we had mac mac coming on as well McLaren. oh mac yeah mac mac uh it's not mac mccarthy is it it's mac mclaren mac mclaren mac mclaren tartan warrior as well i think he's three times world's disabled strongman uh from scotland so we're going to get we're going to get mac on as well uh he'll be great to have him on the podcast because like i say he's 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 someone we met who's amputee former you know obviously um uh you know military veteran as well but i think he actually only had his leg amputated earlier this year which was incredible which i saw and he's and he's obviously been competing um you know in in world's strongest man and stuff like that so yeah we're gonna have mac on as well which will be great he's got, yeah. he's got a one of the best prosthetic legs I've seen as well. It's got like band names all over it. Is it a Metallica one or something like that? Yeah, Doesn't something it? like that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. No, he's, he's a great guy. So yeah, we'll get Mac on as well. So uh, yeah, no, some fantastic guests to look forward to kind of in January and February uh, 2024. So uh, all that is left to be said is hope you all have a fantastic Christmas, a fantastic new year. Um, if you're going to train, enjoy it and train. If you're going to have a bit of a rest, have a rest and get back on it in January and just enjoy yourself. You know, we're not one of the, we're not these people who, you know, you have to have to be a monk all over Christmas and New Year. If you want to have a couple of beers and enjoy yourself, do that. And then hopefully January, get straight back on it and uh, and be focused. Um, so please do like, share, subscribe, leave a review if you are watching or listening on a platform that allows you to do so. We are trying to increase our reach on YouTube. So if you can go onto YouTube, give us a subscribe. That would be much appreciated. And obviously we do have healthoddity.com with every single episode on there um, in audio and visual that you can go on and check out. Um, so have a happy Christmas, Pete. Yep, you too. Merry Christmas and Merry Christmas to everyone out there. We appreciate you all. Yeah, thank you so much again, guys, for listening and supporting us throughout uh, 2023. And we look forward to uh, seeing you more in uh, 2024. And there will obviously be an episode uh, next week on um, Friday the 29th. 29th, I think it is. Friday the 29th, in between Christmas and New Year, there'll be an episode out as well. And then we will see you back uh, next year, 2024. Have a fantastic Christmas. Have a fantastic New Year. And we will see you next week. Until then, bye-bye.